How are we doing today? It's Inga Roleplayer here once again and finally the patch notes are there. Everyone's been waiting for them for quite a while. They have finally released so let's take a look. As usual, only the cream of the crop, not reading the whole shit. I already marked everything that is very important. I marked um, the new things which are matter of importance in the uh, yellow. The nerfs I marked in the red, the buffs I marked in the green, and there's also substantial buffs I marked in this purple, which are like literally twice the improvement. So from the very beginning, uh, we have new skills gems. Gem Soul Ren release a projectile that moves toward and passes free enemies. The bi the biggest question for me right now, before uh, I actually see the skill, is if there's just one projectile like the Essence Drain, or there's multiple projectiles like we saw in the skill presentation video. This is a big question. This is very important because Essence Drain annoyance is that. You shoot just one projectile, it's slow and it's hard to hit the enemy and basically like Uber Elder Shaper fight any fast boss like Hydra, it's quite pr a problem. Another thing, uh, Malevolence, uh, more damage over time, but how much does it reserve? This is another big question because I just finished my Essence Drain build update and uh, you know Despair reserves 35. Uh, obviously, there are many ways how you can reserve less now with the shield reservation less. There's a helm reservation. There's a lot of nodes reservation. This can be reduced your mana reservation. But the biggest question is how much will this reserve? Uh, will we able to just pack every, every curse together or every aura together and uh, basically uh, still have some mana to cast uh, curses or essence drain, soul rent, and all the rest? So, reservation is under a question here. Uh, another th interesting thing, Intelligence Support Gem, Energy Leech Support, like Energy Leech Support is a total new thing in Path of Exile. Previously it wasn't possible to leech except with the Ghost River passive which transformed Life Leech into the Energy Shield Leech and then uh, you take to like Val Pact to increase your Life Leech and thus increasing your Leech of the Energy Shield. Uh, but this thing is just completely different, it's completely new. Supported skills leech a portion of the damage they deal on hit. Uh, leech only works on hit, guys. This is important to understand. If you are new to Path of Exile, uh, you will not be leeching the damage over time effects like the Essence Drain, for example, damage over time, Cold Snap Vortex. You will not be leeching this damage over time portion of the skill. Uh, another interesting thing is Unleash support. Supported sp spells gain seals over time and are unsealed when cast, causing the effects to reoccur for each seal lost. Uh, currently, it's a bit of a mystery how it works, but I think it kind of replicate maybe or store a, a spell effect, and then it's when you lose that seal, it kind of replicates the spell once again. Maybe like spell cascade something, it's hard to tell. 70 new unique items, that's pretty sweet. Okay, added energy, added energy shield leech, that's the important thing guys. Uh, the functionality is similar to life leech, except it leeches your energy shield and is limited by your maximum energy shield leech rate. Okay, uh, Ghost River now causes your leech energy shield instead of life. This is important guys to understand that previously it worked it just transform your life leech to the energy shield leech. Now energy shield and life leech are absolutely different things. Added a cap on the amount of any resource you can leech from individual instant of leech. By default, this cap is 10% of the resource maximum. In other words, a character with four uh, with uh, four thousand life will be by default be able to leech a maximum of 400 life from a single hit. So basically, it kind of nerfs, I think, a uh, Slayer and all, um, and also the Slayer Ascendant node over there. And basically, it nerfs the leech max rate. That's it. A maximum resistance also nerfed. You can no longer have a maximum resistances more than 90 from all sources, like from any sources combined, like on the uh, Rise of the Phoenix, uh, on the Phoenix Shield, or combined with your Lore Weave and all your. Uh, different things like um, the Nabalox and shit, uh, whatever that gives you maximum resistance, like plus one corruptions and all that shit. No more than 90 now. And this is the reason why everyone is trying to buy uh, Lore Weaves and divine them for 80, because Lore Weaves will also get a nerf, guys. I will see it later. Another thing. 
uh, when uh, this is a buff, uh, when a monster attack and you use a mortal call after attack is used, but before it lands, you will now correctly mitigate this damage. This is very, very sweet, and uh, this helps mitigating physical uh, hits uh, with a mortal call. Now it's like more. Uh, it just works as it should be, like mitigating the hits. Um, Consecrated Gown is gone under a substantial uh, rework, and now it uh, causes hits against to have 100% increased critical strike chance, also uh, provides life regeneration, and basically uh, it, it just much better now than it was before. And uh, if you want to play some strong character, I strongly recommend Inquisitor now that it has been buffed through the Consecrated Gown. Okay. Uh, flame Totem, Holy Flame Totem rework uh, now creates a consecrated ground at the totem's location. The consecrated ground grants curse immunity. This is like Pog Champ. Uh, once again, like Flame Totem is Pog Champ. You don't need a curse flask anymore. Uh, this thing uh, Flame Totem, Holy Flame Totem is now considered channeling to and will be affected by things that modify channel skills. This is very interesting too, because potentially you can attach some kind of cast while channeling uh, supported gems to the Flame Totem and while he channels his shit, he will be casting something with, with, through the cast while channeling. I think this is extremely sweet and opens up uh, different possibilities. Now to the nerf guys. Arc has been nerfed. Uh, not a very big nerf, but I would say about 10%, uh, nothing spectacular crazy, but this thing here is quite is quite big, because it lowers the range of which arc can change from 50 units to 25 units, this is like an off-screen killing for arc, it greatly reduces this. Arctic Breath got a really insane buff, and I can tell you a little thing about this. I've been trying to do an Arctic Breath build for quite a while. I'm more been interested in Arctic Breath other than Cold Snap and Vortex. I have everything done already for the Arctic Breath and I've been really waiting for some kind of rework. And uh, this buff literally increases Arctic Breath damage by about 30%. This is a lot and this is a pretty big boost and I'm looking forward to see uh, how Arctic Breath now competes with the Cold Snap and Vortex and uh, Essence Drain and all of the shit as well. Armageddon Brank has been slightly nerfed uh, by about 20% I guess. Assassin Mark has been nerfed I believe because it changes the critical strike chance now uh, from 5% to 1.5 oh, to and uh, but now it scales with the other sources of crit strike chain, so I'm not sure it's a nerf or, or a buff or a change at this point. Ball lightning has been buffed uh, slightly, slightly damage effectiveness has been slightly buffed, but overall it's nothing crazy. But the base damage at level one has been greatly buffed too. Blade Vortex got a nerf, guys, and uh, this is really fun. Uh, the nerf is quite big actually, it's about 20% nerf and uh, it means that my build uh, with the Blade Waters Inquisitor that I created a long time ago will be uh, pretty much hit quite hard at this point as well. I'm not sure why th at this point, Blade Waters is not really very popular now as well, so I'm not sure why they're nerfing this at this point. So, uh, Blade Fall has been buffed as well, mm, this is not a very big buff but still it's good to see. Blight has been substantially increased and uh, this opens up and more possibilities to uh, play some uh, cast while channeling Blight, because Blight is a channeling spell. Uh, it's quite substantially increased, or about 20 to 25% and uh, also gains additional radius now as it levels up, uh, about two, two radius it got. It's very interesting, it's very interesting. Cleave uh, can now affect up to 40 targets per attack. Uh, it's basically been changed for many, many skills, by the way, not only for Cleave. Cold Snap has been buffed too, a little, on gem level 1, uh, but uh, overall it has been just scaled, rescaled. Uh, it's pretty much the same damage as it is now, as it was before. Contagion also spreads to 40 targets, Convocation cooldown uh, reduced to 4 seconds, it's pretty sweet for the self-cast, it's actually very nice. 
cremation has been substantially buffed guys substantially buffed look at the look at the numbers it's 30 percent more damage on cremation now i really want to see more cremation builds from now on and this is one of the interesting skills that i've been messing around for quite a while several months ago i've been trying to do the cremation build and now it looks like it's back to reality dark pack has been buffed too by around uh, what 20 to 25 percent right yeah it's very good guys it's about 20 25 percent very sweet dark pack and dark pack totems build that i created it was the very first build that i wrote myself dark pack totems build it has been buffed too uh the uh, the riders has all been buffed it's very sweet didn't they dead has been greatly buffed through the damage effectiveness look at this 160 from 100 so didn't they dead is more viable than before discharge has been buffed on all layers it's very interesting too uh not a very big buff but overall it's still a buff of about 10 percent more damage now on discharge and feeble uh the way that curses work now and the way that uh, it affects bosses now it's very nice because a look at this a rare unique enemies deal 10 percent less damage up to 15 percent less damage previously it was much less effectiveness uh normal magic enemies have separate uh, curse effectiveness in them too essence drain has been buffed too guys look at this and it also reworked a little now explosion impacts applying an essence drain debuff to enemies in a small radius also this explosion deals no hit damage. As a result of this change, Essence Drain now has an area damage type. That's interesting. Uh, now deals... Uh, look at the numbers. It's like 30% more increase. Yesterday I killed Uber Elder with the Essence Drain. I will be uploading the video for you guys. Imagine this. I was doing more 30% more damage with Essence Drain. Just Pog Champ. I am super hyped and I'm very happy that I selected uh, this Essence Drain and Soul Rend as my league starter. This is incredible buff, incredible. Ethereal Lives, guys, another big buff and honestly I believe that this skill will shine in uh, the current patch and it will be the skill to go for fast map farmers. I know that Ethereal Knives has been quite popular uh, several uh, leagues ago and then kind of Blade Works uh, occupied this and then Winter Orb took this over. But now I think that with this buff, it has quite a lot of buff, it's like 30%, almost twice more damage, like 30% more damage, this is a lot. And I believe that Ethereal Knives will take over. Explosive Trap buffed once again, gained Radius, Final Mine damage effectiveness improved. Fireball got a pretty substantial buff, I would say 20% more, 20% more guys. So Fireball is good now, it's pretty decent amount of damage right here. This 20% more. Firestorm cast rate incre lowered, uh, cast faster now. Flame Surge slightly increased, Flame Blast slightly increased, Flame Frow slightly increased, Freezing Pool slightly increased. Uh, Frost Bomb is worked differently now. Now applies cold exposure to affected enemies rather than reducing their cold res. It's which uh, valid for all uh, such kind of debuffing spells as well. Frost Ball uh, has been slightly increased. Look at this. Not not a slightly, guys. Not a slightly. It's been greatly, greatly, greatly increased. Look at this. Almost like 25% more damage that's pretty crazy guys look like frostball is back once again it's one of the st skills that are really yeah, like, yeah it's like 25 to 30 percent more damage that's really interesting so frostball is back glacial cascade has been pretty damn nerfed i would say uh lost about 15 percent more less more lost about 15 percent damage so glacial cascade is nerfed Ground Slam increased, Hatred has been reworked, now grants more cold damage and also a lowered the amount of fees as, as extra cold up to 25 and, uh, from 36, so 10% less uh, fees as extra cold, but at the same time we get more cold damage, so it's very strong with all cold damage guys, very strong. Ice Nova has been pretty substantially nerfed I would say, lost about... 20% damage as far as you can see. Yeah, it's a substantial, substantial nerf, guys. 
I think that the Cock Ice Snowbar build will not be as strong as it was before. Ice Spill got a small buff. Uh, Ice Trap got a very, very strong buff. This is one of the strongest buffs I've seen, actually. Look at the damage effectiveness. 150 up from 90. This is absurd. And look at this. Almost doubled, actually. Like, like 40% more damage. This is extremely high. I have a feeling that Ice Trap will be popular this league as well. Incinerate, small buff. Lightning Spire got nerfed a little. I honestly uh, do not believe that it really required a nerf. A Lightning Spire was not a, like an absolutely insane killer. A Lightning Tendrils got a little buff. A Lightning Trap got a little buff. Lightning Warp got a little buff. Orb of Storms is substantially buffed. Almost doubled. Almost double, guys. Look at this. Holy shit. Like, really. Orb of Storms doubled. This is crazy. I want to see just how useful will Orb of Storms will be. Like, in what combinations will be people using this now from now on. Scorching Ray. No longer lowers enemy resistance with the stacking debuff. But applies fire exposure at maximum stacks. This is, I think, a nerf more than a buff in general, because previously it just like a stacking debuff, which greatly reduced fire risk. But it also has been substantially increased in damage to almost 100 more damage, uh, base damage. And this is about, like we say, 30% more, 25 to 30% more damage. This is pretty insane. Scorge Arrow now has a Chaos Gem type suite. Uh, it means that it will multiply with all kind of chaos uh, improvements on the tree, chaos skills, chaos brings, all of the stuff. Zismic trap also has been slightly increased. Shock Nova, this is a thing, guys. This is a thing. Look at this. Look at this. Almost like 40% more damage, like 30% more damage, 30 something. And the damage effectiveness is absolutely ridiculous. It has been doubled. I can't wait to see what numbers I will get in Path of Building, guys. Several patches ago, I created the Shock Nova Elementalist build, and this is the only build that I know personally that killed uh, that killed um, Shaper with the Shock Nova. I was the only one experimenting with this. I only I'm the only one cared to play Shock Nova to the very end game, and I'm extremely hyped to see this. I think that my build will shine from now on, honestly. Shockwave Totem, another thing it has been substantially buffed, almost 30%, like 30 to 40% more damage. I really want to see more shock Shockwave Totem builds from now on, guys. Uh, really hype. Siphoning Trap, this trap that no one has been using, has been greatly buffed, almost 30% more. I really want to see more on this too, this is very interesting. Spark has been slightly buffed, Spectral Shield Throw, slightly buffed, just a little bit on the base attack. Storm brand nerfed. Uh, I would say it's a pretty big nerf, guys. It's about uh, what 25% less damage. 25% less damage. That's pretty substantial nerf to Storm brand. Storm call buffed. Uh, Summon raging spirit was nerfed. I honestly I do not understand why. It doesn't. It's never really. It, it's, it's not really you now a very uh, popular skill now. Now we have Spectre, Skeletons, all kind of shit, Herald of Agony. Why nerfing someone on Rage Spirit? The cost has been 12, now it's 16, that's retarded. That's absolutely retarded, I don't see the point in this, what's the point? Guys, can't even explain me why the fuck th this was done. Okay, Temporal Chains, uh, just like in Feeble, it affects unique and rare enemies with the higher effectiveness. Now, another big thing, guys, Unearth. Unearth has been uh, pretty much a change. Now deals damage in a small area around where the projectiles land. As a result, Unearth is now an area spell. Okay. And damage has been substantially buffed too. Look at this. This is pretty substantial buff. That's about, uh, I would say about 15 to 20% buffed. I think this is very, very sweet. Volatile Dead has been nerfed. Just a little. Vortex has been nerfed too. Just a very little, I would say, very little, but still a little nerf uh, to Vortex. Winter Orb. Now, they nerfed Winter Orb too, but not very high. I actually expected like a bigger nerf, but just a little bit of a nerf. Winter Orb is still there, guys. Don't worry. It's still fucking strong. Just a little bit. 
Uh, Blade Warrix has been nerfed too, along with the Blade Warrix and general Val Blade Warrix also got a hit. Val Cold Snap, a little buff. Val Detonate Dead. Now, this is a little buff to the Val Detonate Dead, and look at the damage effectiveness 200%. 25% more damage effectiveness, very sweet. Impurities has also been nerfed. 4% uh, hour effect per general from 5. And now you take 25% less damage of the associated element instead of just 25% reduced damage in general. So this is a nerf, guys. Uh, now another interesting thing. that uh, Stormberry has been reworked into infused channeling support. Another interesting thing. Now grants reduced damage taken from hits while channeling of types matching the supported skill gems tag. So basically if you channel lightning damage, uh, basically you take uh, more... Uh, less damage from hits while channeling right also reduces physical damage taken from hits while channeling that's pretty sweet matching the supported skill gem tags okay but this is a bit, ma a bit of a mess reduce damage taken from hits while channeling of types matching the supported yeah so basically lightning damage from hits you if you're channeling lightning you take less uh, damage from lightning hits. That's about it. Uh, now grants infusion after channeling for a duration. Infusion grants more damage of types matching the supported skill gem tag. So, if you are channeling uh, lightning something, lightning tendrils, for example, infusion grants you more damage to the type of lightning that you're channeling right now. That's very sweet. I think this is really interesting and uh, it really buffs all channeling. It's really sweet that we have uh, something like cast while channeling. Other than that, I think it's really good. Arcane Surge support also is better now. Look at this. Now, cause the supported skills to deal 10% more spell damage while you have Arcane Surge at gem level 1. Up to 90% more at gem level 20. This is really sweet. And this is separate to the spell damage multiplier granted by the Arcane Surge buff itself. So it's separate, guys. It's like in more, it's like more multiply on 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 top of the arcane surge buff. I think this is really sweet. Now to the substantial changes. These things over here, chain support, decay fork, and innervate has been a shit for quite a while, and I'm extremely happy that they're getting a buff, guys. Look at this, chain support, cause support skill to thirty percent less from fifty. So so this is a substantial buff that makes chain kind of usable. Uh, and look at this, 11% uh, less at 20 from 31, so this is actually kind of usable now in the very end game. Decay also extremely, extremely buffed too, look at this. Uh, almost 20% more damage on the Decay, this is very nice. Uh, decay can be used with the Essence Drain leveling, uh, when you don't have Empower level 4, you can use Decay and you'll get substantial uh, dot buff for your Essence Drain 2 or Soul Rain, for example, or Arctic Breath or anything, guys. Decay is back. Fork support. Now, cause support is skill to deal 10% less damage to gem level 1. Okay, up to 9 more. More, guys. Have you seen that? Have you seen it, guys? Have you seen it? More. More damage from less to more. This is like the biggest thing Fork has ever got. This is I. This is literally like one of the first things that I see where uh, Jam switches from less to more. This is very very strong. Inner weight also got buff, and I have inner weight somewhere on one of my builds. I need to check where is it. I think it was, I think it was actually the. Oh yeah, I got winter orb innervation there, and I think it got a buff too. That's very sweet. Onslaught support. Look at this. Ground supporter skill, 10% chance to hit a unique enemy to grant onslaught for 3 seconds. Very nice, very nice. This is very useful in the very beginning as well as in the end game. I think it's very sweet. Uh, and there's no need for onslaught flask anymore with this shit. Spell cascade also buffed, guys. Summon phantasmon killed also buffed, nice. Also buffed, look at this. 10% chance to summon a summon a phantasm with supported skills. Uh, on non phantasm minions from supported skills, hit a rare or unique enemy. That's incredibly, incredibly interesting, guys. Now, there's also a lot of rebox on the passive tree balance. This is a lot of things, guys, over here. Mostly like on the shadow areas where you get all kind of shock, spell damage, energy shield, leech out there. 
when pathway building will be uh, will be updated we will see this like ha have a whole picture of it right now i can tell you that uh, a lot of things have changed on the skill tree a lot of block spell damage a lot of energy shield leech uh, a lot of uh, energy shield and block and all this stuff evasion rating max energy shield Basically, a lot of things are changing on the shadow around Trickster and then the witch areas as well. I'll only mark like the most important things here. Um, new cluster between meaning and stability and elemental overload. A light eater. The notable grants 20% increased max total recovery per second from energy shield. Leech. Spell damage leeches energy shield and 24% increased spell damage while on full energy shield. This is extremely strong. Uh, Heart of Flame, Harris and Thunder now grants uh, 0.2 of their elements damage, leeches and energy shield. Once again, energy shield leeching as everywhere. Ash, Frost and, Frost and Storm, 20% increase ally damage, buff. Guys, this is buffed. Uh, all resistance also as well, as well as increased ally damage. Sweet. Fire Walker, Lightning Walker and Frost Walker now grants 25% increased damage of the associated elements also above, as well as 5% increased cast speed. So cast speed and ally damage is strong now. Mental Rapidity now grants 8% increased cast speed up from 6. Uh, grant cast speed, cast speed, cast speed everywhere. Fucking cast speed buff everywhere, guys. Uh, okay. Um, Snowforge, 10% fire and cold res. Also, crit multiply with fire skills and cold multiply, cold crit, cold strike, critical strike chain with cold, uh, with cold skill. That's about it. Nimbleness 12, uh, critical strike multiplier for spells and crit strike chance for spells. This is another crit multiplier for spells, really sweet. And now we're moving to the very end, to the very end part of this thing, guys, and these are more nerfs. Uh, Slayer has been greatly nerfed, uh, now grants 40% increased damage while leeching, now grants 40% increased area effect if you have killed recently, up from 20, but no longer grants, no longer grants increased damage while leeching, so no buff guys. Now also grants 50% reduced maximum recovery per life leech. So, unfortunately, Slayer has been destroyed at this point. Not very much, he will be still alive, but looking at how Leech has changed and looking at how Energy Shield Leech has been uh, uh, buffed and uh, now introduced in the game, uh, basically, Slayer has been slightly nerfed. Enchantments now, now have their own mod slots and items. This is one of the most biggest things happen in part of exile since forever guys so basically helm and chance uh, lab and chance and implicit are now at different spots out there as a mod and uh, this makes bone helmets be incredibly more powerful than before even though they will be uh, they will be nerfed the free the two tone boots guys have been nerfed uh basically from 15 20 to 8 uh 12 two tone boots raised in price right now bone helmets nerf to uh to 15 20 from 30 40 so 20 percent less minion damage guys that's about it uh cheaper cheaper stuff that gra the granted lightning damage per 10 intelligence has been slightly buffed too uh, another thing has been nerfed is this, you can uh, no longer roll or craft more than one fist damage as, as, as fire cold lightning, so you can roll more than one. You can no, lo no, no, no longer craft free world mana mods, you can no longer craft multiple mods which affect the item's quality on the say item, so say goodbye to this 60% uh, quality shit, 60-40% quality is impossible. Uh, cartography scarabs, so scarabs, sulfate and divination scarabs all has been substantially nerfed, guys. Uh, Blood of Corruption, Gluten of Elements now grants curse immunity, this is above. Death's Oath, Death Aura skill now tw deals 20%, 25% more damage per second, this is actually buff. And I've seen that a lot of people will be playing Death's Oath um, in the upcoming expansion and I really can't wait to see what kind of more builds and there's also a pretty cool ex uh, build right now on the occultist of the tricks are using death over and I strongly recommend to check it out guys this is a very unique item uh, Tom Fist has been substantially nerfed this is look at this no longer grants attack speed guys 
People are trying to buy Tomb Fist like crazy now on Standard. Do not sell your Tomb Fist. Divine your two circuit Tomb Fist, guys. Do not sell them whatsoever. Lore Weave, strong nerf too. Uh, from 80 to 78 max now. So your 80% Lore Weaves are now absolutely GG, guys. That's about it. Do not use Divine of uh, them in the 3.6. Spreading Rot no longer causes enemies hindered by blight to take increased chaos damage and instead now causes blight to inflict withered on enemies on 2 seconds per copy of Spreading Rot. I think this is actually a nerf. So basically uh, Spreading Rot now causes wither instead of increased chaos damage taken. This is a nerf. Poet Span also nerf and uh, only triggers spell socketed within if you attacked with a specific weapon. That's about it. Previously, dual wielding the poet span would mean that you triggered spells from both weapons with each, with, you, with each attack. Now, what will happen now? If you attack with a specific weapon, then you trigger this shit. If you didn't attack, you didn't trigger this shit. That's about it. I'm not entirely sure how will this uh, affect the uh, classic unearth, you know, uh, friends and stuff. But I have a feeling that it really cuts poet span in half. Lily Rot now sells added chaos damage support and detonate might. That's a buff. Uh, this is a boss's curse effectiveness, guys. Also a buff for curses, and this is a curse leak if you don't remember this. Spectered Blood Chieftains now have a cooldown on their power charge generation roar. Oh my god. These people who really use this Blood Chieftains uh, on the skeletons, unfortunately, this is a nerf, guys. There's also substantially more uh, drops from the Syndicate encounters now. They will just drop more stuff. They will allow higher quality and higher ranks. And overall, the Master in Mind has also been substantially made easier and more transparent. The fight is easier now. Uh, what else? Ne less likely to find fossils at depth shallower than 80, 80, uh, than 58 guys. And more likely to find fossils at deeper. That's it. Fossil farmers. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. This fossil farming uh, guides. Goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, it literally kills and currently destroys all the low uh, farming, you know, fossils, low delve farming fossils, guys, out there, which is sad, I believe, to the to, for these guys. As you know, over the course of time, things just change. Uh, sulfite, now most likely to contain free veins. This is a buff. Uh, another thing that's happened is the uh, pure Bridgestones has been substantially nerfed almost two times a nerf, guys, two times a nerf, like from 350 to 200 and uh, from 250 to 100. This is like more, twice more than a nerf to XP. I'm really, sh I'm really not sure what people will be doing, like uh, Pujas, Rotations, Bridgestones or still the pure bridge stones um, have no idea but this is a pretty solid nerf to the xp uh this is also sweet buff uh crafting bench now displays all mods not just the mods you have unlocked mods you have not unlocked are grayed out so now you can actually see all the mods are, that are there guys and uh, i think this is also also very very interesting uh, I also check these things where the new spells are available and Malevolence and now available in Lost and Love as well as Bane, so they are like both after one quest. Soul Run however, is now available after Sever the Right Hand, which will take a while, unfortunately. So we'll be playing uh, Contagion and Essence Drain up till this point. Uh, the new Bane and Sovereign also has attack time override of 0.4 seconds applied to its damage over time. I'm not entirely sure what is this, but I really hope this is not messing things around. And look at this. It has a, sm a small, like, cherry on top of a pie. Fix the bug where your spell totems would inherit their blood water stacks from you rather than having their own set. I have a feeling that... Uh, that really like destroys the Wolfio Blade Vortex uh, totem build that he created a couple of months ago. I think I saw that he was playing that. Unfortunately, I think that kills uh, the build, guys, and that's about it. So overall, if we if we go through all of this, some of the skills have been substantially buffed, and some of the strong things like the Winter Orb, 
Stormbrand uh, Blade Warwicks has been substantially nerfed too. But overall there are more buffs than the nerfs. There's also a lot of interaction with Consecrated Ground with the spells uh, which we... Um, with the channeling spells. There's also substantial rework with the Trickster area, with the Shadow area, with the Witch area. Overall I'm really curious to see what will happen in the upcoming 3.6 expansion. I hope that this video was useful for you guys and you have like the basic understanding what is happening. Thanks for watching and see you soon. First of all, I would like to thank you very much for watching the video. Your likes and dislikes, especially as they push me forward even more. If you want to see more content, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do daily uploads of role-playing content, Bennett builds, guides, let's play, stream highlights and upcoming RPG games. Also, don't forget to follow my Twitch stream to catch me live in action. I do stream daily on walking days. I'm a full-time YouTube content creator and a Twitch streamer too, so if you want to support me, you can do it either from Twitch or by PayPal directly from my website angryrollplayer.com. Join my Discord channel too for a place to discuss RPG things offline as well as follow my Twitter to be notified on any new content. If you want to get extra information like sneak peeks into upcoming videos, plans, different behind-the-scenes footage, you can also join the Unholy Army on Patreon as well, guys. Thank you very much once again for watching and listening to all this. See you soon.